Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. This is reading the Old Testament chronologically in 111 days. We're on day 27. Today we'll be finishing up Numbers, reading chapters 34 through 36, and starting Deuteronomy, reading chapters 1 through 3. So let's get started here in the book of Numbers, chapter 34. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel, and saying to them, When ye come into the land of Canaan, this is the land that shall fall unto you for an inheritance, even the land of Canaan with the coasts thereof. Then your south quarter shall be from the wilderness of Zin along the coast of Edom, and your south border shall be the outmost coast of the Salt Sea eastward, and your border shall turn from the south to the ascent of Akrabim, and pass on to Zin, and the going forth thereof shall be from the south to Kadesh Barnea, and shall go on to Hazaradar, uh, and pass on to Asmon. And the border shall fetch a compass from Asmon unto the rivers of Egypt, and the goings out of it shall be at the sea. And as for the western border, ye shall even have the great sea for a border, this shall be your west border, and this shall be your north border, from the great sea shall point out for you Mount Hor. From Mount Hor ye shall point out your border unto the entrance of Hamath, and the goings forth of the border shall be to Zedad. And the border shall go on to Ziphron, and the goings out of it shall be at Hazarinan, this shall be your north border, and ye shall point out your east border from Hazarinan to Shephan, and the coast shall go down from Shephan to Ribla, on the east side of Ain, and the border shall descend and shall reach unto the side of the sea of Chinnereth eastward. And the border shall go down to Jordan, and the goings out of it shall be at the Salt Sea. This shall be your land, with the coasts thereof round about. And Moses commanded the children of Israel, saying, This is the land which ye shall inherit by lot, which the Lord commanded to give unto the nine tribes, and to the half-tribe. For the tribe of the children of Reuben, according to the house of their fathers, and the tribe of the children of Gad, according to the house of their fathers, have received their inheritance, and half the tribe of Manasseh have received their inheritance. The two tribes and the half-tribe have received their inheritance on this side, Jordan, near Jericho, eastward, toward the sun rising. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, These are the names of the men which shall divide the land unto you, Eleazar the priest, and Joshua the son of Nun. And you shall take one prince of every tribe to divide the land by inheritance. And the names of the men are these, of the tribe of Judah, Caleb the son of Japuna, of the tribe of the children of Simeon, Shemuel the son of Amihud, of the tribe of Benjamin, Eldad the son of Chislon, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Dan, Buki the son of Jogli, the prince of the children of Joseph, for the tribe of the children of Manasseh, Haniel the son of Ephod, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Ephraim, Kemuel the son of Shiptan, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Zebulun, Elizaphan the son of Parnak, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Issachar, Paltiel the son of Azan, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Asher, Ahihud the son of Shalomi, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Naphtali, Pedahil, the son of Amihud, these are they whom the Lord commanded to divide the inheritance unto the children of Israel in the land of Canaan. Numbers 35 And the Lord spake unto Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Command the children of Israel that they give unto the Levites of the inheritance of their possession cities to dwell in, and ye shall give also unto the Levites suburbs for the cities round about them. And the city shall they have to dwell in, and the suburbs of them shall be for their cattle, and for their goods, and for all their beasts. And the suburbs of the cities which ye shall give unto the Levites shall reach from the wall of the city, and outward a thousand cubits round about. And ye shall measure from without the city, on the east side two hundred two thousand cubits, and on the south side two thousand cubits, on the west side two thousand cubits, on the north side two thousand cubits, and the city shall be in the midst, they shall be to them the suburbs of the cities." And among the cities which ye shall give unto the Levites, there shall be six cities for refuge, which ye shall appoint for the manslayer, that he may flee thither, and to them that shall add forty and two cities. So all the cities which ye shall give to the Levites shall be forty and eight cities, them that shall ye give with their suburbs. And the cities which ye shall give shall be of the possession of the children of Israel, from them that they that have many ye shall give many. But from them that have few, you shall give few. Every one according, every one shall give of his cities unto Levites according to his inheritance which he inheriteth. 
And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then ye shall appoint you cities to be cities of refuge for you, that the slayer may flee thither, which killeth any person at unawares. And they shall be unto you cities for refuge from the avenger, that the manslayer die not, until he stand before the congregation in judgment. And of these cities which ye shall give, six cities shall ye have for refuge. Ye shall give three cities on the side Jordan, and three cities shall ye give on the land of Canaan, which shall be cities of refuge. These six cities shall be a refuge, both for the children of Israel, and for the stranger, and for the sojourner that among them, that every one that killeth any person unawares may flee thither. And if he smite him with an instrument of iron, so that he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. And if he smite him with a throwing throwing a stone wherewith he may die, and he die, he is a murderer, the murderer shall surely be put to death. Or if he smite him with a hand weapon of wood wherewith he may die, and he die, he is a murderer, the murderer shall surely be put to death. The revenger of blood himself shall slay the murderer, when he meeteth him, he shall slay him. But if he thrust him of hatred, or hurl at him by laying a weight, that he die, or in enmity smite him with his hand, that he die, he that smote him shall surely be put to death, for he is a murderer. The revenger of blood shall slay the murderer when he meeteth him. But if he thrust him suddenly without enmity, or have cast upon him anything without laying of weight, or with any stone wherewith a man may die, seeing him not, and cast it upon him, that he die was not his enemy, neither sought his harm, then the congregation shall judge between the slayer and the revenger of blood according to these judgments. So yeah, it's pretty clear uh, God's making a, a division between murder and, uh, you know, accidentally uh, killing somebody uh, so basically pre uh, murder and like premeditative stuff like that and the congregation shall deliver this out of the hand of the revenger of blood and the congregation shall restore him to the city of his refuge whither he was fled and he shall abide in it until the death of the high priest which was anointed with the holy oil but if the slayer shall at any time come without the border of the city of his refuge, whither he was fled, and the revenger of blood find him without the borders of the city of his refuge, and the revenger of blood kill the slayer, he shall not be guilty of blood, because he should have remained in the city of his refuge until the death of the high priest. But after the death of the high priest, the slayer shall return into the land of his possession. So these things shall be for a statute of judgment unto you throughout your generations and all your dwellings. Whoso killeth any person, the murderer, shall be put to death by the mouth of witnesses. But one witness shall not testify against any person to cause him to die. Moreover, you shall take no satisfaction for the life of a murderer which is guilty of death, but he shall surely be put to death, and you shall take no satisfaction for him that is fled to the city of his refuge, that he should come again to dwell in the land until the death of the priest. So you shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land, and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. Defile it not, therefore, the land which ye shall inhabit, wherein I dwell. For I, the Lord, dwell among the children of Israel. So yeah, it's important to know that um, in the Bible, there is a difference between killing and murder. Um, obviously, the children of Israel, right now, the story is, or where they're at in the story is, they're just about ready to enter into the, the promised land. Ready and to and God wants them to wipe out everyone, all the different nations that are corrupting the land, polluting the land, spilling blood, doing all these wicked abominations that I'm not even gonna name. And um, so he, God told them, when you go into this land, you are to clear out everyone. God gave them uh, over 400 years, these people, these nations, to repent and turn from their sins, and they did not. So don't say that God's not patient, because God is patient. And uh, God cannot stand evil. So, these people, um, that's just their time. Like, people are always like, oh, God, uh, the, in the Old Testament, he's mean and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, he's holy God. He cannot stand seeing all these abominations come to pass. Um, so, uh, it's very important to realize that um, when, you know, the Bible talks about, like, you go and you, you wipe out the city or this nation... Um, that's a commandment by God, number one. And um, number two, it's not murder because they're basically at war. Um, so, I mean, there's lots of little fine details people could nitpick about this situation. But the fact of the matter is, God, Almighty God, told them to do so. Number one. All right, that should be your number one. God said so. Obviously, God knows better than us. Who are we to question God? But if we were 
to look at the Bible as a whole, we see the evil and the wickedness that are in them, and we see why God wanted to wipe them out, because the nations are so wicked and evil, just like Sodom and Gomorrah. They were so wicked, like only Lot and his um, his wife and his daughters, while well, his wife got turned into a pillar of salt because she looked back, but only Lot and his daughters escaped out of two, well, more than two cities, but two main big cities full of people. And then some smaller surrounding cities too got wiped out. But my point is like only Lot and his two daughters escaped from that situation because of Abraham. Abraham pleaded for God, uh, pleaded to God for Lot's sake. And God listened. But my point is all these people, disgusting abominations that they were doing, um, they got wiped out. And so... Yeah, that's God. God. Part of God's character is he cannot stand evil. He cannot stand sin. And he is very long-suffering and very patient. So uh, when people like to nitpick the Bible and say, oh, uh, God, during the Old Testament, he's just so mean and blah, blah, blah. And uh, read the Bible for yourself and you'll see God's character. And there's reasons for everything. And God uh, sometimes doesn't even give us reasons. Sometimes, uh, you know, it's just so. Just like, you know, when he tells Moses something, Moses does it. He doesn't be like, well, God, I don't know about that. Um, the only time I could think of that Moses says something back to God is when uh, the children of Israel sin and Moses and, and God's like, about, he's like, Moses, stand back. I'm about to wipe these people out and start over with you. And Moses is like, no, Lord, please don't do it. Like he, he was pleading with God on that. So that's the only case where he was actually pleading with God, just like Abraham pleaded with God. And just like we can take those lessons and we can plead with God. And there's nothing wrong with telling God how you feel, because obviously he already knows your heart. He's the only one that knows your heart truly. He knows your thoughts and, and intents of your heart and your mind before you do. He's outside of time. He sees the whole picture. So it's no use hiding anything, which is why when we go into prayer, we must confess our hearts out to him. Because why would we hold anything back to Almighty God? He already knows everything. Um, so it's best just to, to you know, pour our hearts out to God in prayer. And, um, you know, it's okay if we want to say, Lord, I want this, you know. Uh, but, you know, not my will, but yours be done. See, that? there's nothing wrong with that. Even Jesus Christ prayed that prayer. He was like, take this cup from me, Lord, but nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. It's okay if we pray like that. You can state clearly what God, what you want to God. God already knows. And be like, but God, I want this, but I'll be, I'm willing to wait for what you want for me and your timing and in your way. But this is what I want. So there's um, kind of getting off on a rant here, but about prayer. But the fact of the matter is we can plead with God too. Just like, you know, sometimes... Uh, actually, every time you pray, it's good to quote scripture to God, you know, good Lord, you know, here, here in the, in your word, your words say to trust in the Lord with all thine heart. I'm trusting in you with all my heart and to not lean on my own understanding and in all my ways, acknowledge you and you will direct my paths. Um, so please Lord direct my paths. So that's something we could do too is, is quote scripture to God. There's nothing wrong with that. So my point is like. Sometimes God's not going to give us an answer, right? Sometimes God will just tell us to do something and we should do it. Just like he told Moses to do something. And I'd say 99% of the time he did do it. Except for the couple times, you know, pleading uh, for the children of Israel's sake. So, very important lesson. So, continue on here. Numbers 36. And the chief fathers of the families of the children of Galid, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, of the families of the sons of Joseph, came near and spake before Moses and before the princes, the chief fathers of the children of Israel. And they said, The Lord commanded my Lord to give the land for an inheritance by lot to the children of Israel. And my Lord was commanded by the Lord to give the inheritance of Zelophehad, our brother, unto his daughters. And if they be married to any of the sons of the other tribes of the children of Israel, then shall their inheritance be taken away from the inheritance of our fathers, and shall be put to the inheritance of the tribe where unto they are received, so shall be taken from the lot of our inheritance. And when the jubilee of the children of Israel shall be, then shall their inheritance be put unto the inheritance of the tribe where unto they are received, so shall their inheritance be taken away from the inheritance of the tribe of our fathers. And Moses commanded the children of Israel according to the word of the Lord, saying, The tribe of the sons of Joseph hath said well. This is the thing which the Lord doth command concerning the daughters of Zelophehad, saying, Let them marry to whom they think best, only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. 
So shall, they, shall not the inheritance of the children of Israel remove from the tribe to tribe, for every one of the children of Israel shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. And every daughter that possesseth an inheritance in any tribe of the children of Israel shall be wife unto the one of the family of the tribe of her father, that the in children of Israel may enjoy every man the inheritance of his fathers. Neither shall the inheritance remove from one tribe to another, but every one of the tribes of the children of Israel shall keep himself to his own inheritance. Even as the Lord commanded Moses, so did the daughters of Zelophehad. For Mala, Tirzan, Hagla, and Milcah, and Noah, the daughters of Zelophehad, were married unto their father's brother's sons. And they were married into the families of the sons of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, and their inheritance remained in the tribe of the family of their father. These are the commandments and the judgments which the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses unto the children of Israel in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho. Yep, so that's exactly where they're at right now in this point in time. They're literally about to go and capture the, their first city, destroy their first city, slaughter you know people in that city, the evil people. Uh, they're about ready to go and conquer their very first city, which is Jericho. That is the first city they go into. Um, and obviously that's a famous story, you know, marching around Jericho, but, um, that's where they're at. They're almost in the land. They're basically on the border and about to go in. Now, <laughs> if you have read the Bible before, you know that the people of Jericho are scared so much, like they're so scared because they see the impending army at their doorstep and they've heard about all the things that God did for them. So, I mean, oh man, I, I can't even imagine what that'd be like. Just the fear so much fear and they shut the city up and they're you know keeping everybody out because of that fear so yep that's where we're at in the story about to to go to jericho so moving on to deuteronomy now <clears throat> i say that but there's going to be some um history right now in deuteronomy so we probably won't get to the story of um we're not we're not going to get to the story of jericho yet we're close but we have some recaps to do first so I can't wait for the story of Jericho because it's a really great story. But first things first, we need to go through the recaps. So Deuteronomy 1.1. 1, 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all the Israel on this side Jordan in the wilderness, in the plain over against the Red Sea, between Paran, Tophel, Laban, Hazroth, and Dizhaba. Dizahab. These eleven days journey from Horeb by the way of Mount Seir unto Kadesh Barnea, and it came to pass in the fortieth year, in the eleventh month, on the first day of the month, that Moses spake unto the children of Israel according to all the Lord had given him in the commandment unto them. After he had slain Sihon, king of the Amorites, which dwelt in Heshbon, and Og, king of Bashan, which dwelt at Ashtaroth and Edrei, on this side Jordan, the land of Moab, began Moses to declare this law, saying, the Lord our God spake unto us in Horeb, saying, Ye have dwelt long enough in this mount. Turn you and take your journey, and go to the mount of the Amorites, and unto all the places nigh thereunto, in the plain, in the hills, in the vale, in the south, in the seaside, to the land of the Canaanites, and unto Lebanon, unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord sware unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them and to their seed after them. And I spake unto you at that time, saying, I am not able to bear you myself alone. The Lord your God hath multiplied you, and behold, ye are this day as the stars of heaven for multitude. Yeah, I think uh, the Bible is going to explain how many people there are, but it's in the millions. If I remember right, it's it's millions of people. So can you imagine being in that you know, city of Jericho and seeing just like this gigantic army of millions, millions of people? at your doorstep so not only the size of the army but also hearing all the uh they they did hear all the stuff that you know god did for them so they knew that god was on their side as well so man can i even imagine that so anyway the lord god of your fathers make you a thousand times so many more than ye are and bless you as he hath promised you how can i myself alone bear your cumbrance and your burden and your strife take you wise men and understanding and known among your tribes and i will make them rulers over you and ye answered me and said, The thing which thou hast spoken is good for us to do. So I took the chief of your tribes, wise men and known, and made them heads over you, captains over thousands, and captains over hundreds, and captains over fifties, and captains over tens, and officers among your tribes. And I charged your judges at that time, saying, Hear the causes between your brethren, and judge righteously between every man and his brother, and the stranger that is with him. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment." 
but ye shall hear the small as well as the great. Ye shall not be afraid of the face of men, for the judgment is God's, and the cause that is too hard for you bring unto me, and I will hear it. So this is very important uh, when we're talking about judgment. This is very, very important to realize. Even the New Testament speaks about judgment. Judge, even Christ says, judge righteous judgment. Um, you know, according, not according to flesh, not according to looks. And even says here, uh, do not respect persons. He even, even says that God is no respecter of persons. What does that mean? No respecter of persons. He doesn't like look at one people greater than another. Be like, okay, these people have different blood than these people. So I'm going to lift them up and, and so on and so forth. So that's why we shouldn't lift up people who are like, oh, that guy looks like he's, you know, uh, you know, well off. And that guy's poor over there. So I'm not even going to deal with him. You know, things like that, you're judging based on vanity, you're judging based on the outward appearance. That's why it says, uh, don't judge, don't be a respecter of persons, but you shall hear the small, so small, as well as the great. So if he's like a, you know, man of renown or whatever, you'll hear him both. Someone who is unknown versus someone who is well known. So very important that we understand that, um, not to look at things so vainly in this life. Deuteronomy 118, and I commanded you at that time that all the things which you should do. And when we departed from Horeb, we went through all that great and terrible wilderness, which you saw by the way of the mountain of the Amorites, as the Lord God, our God, commanded us, and we came to Kadesh Barnea. And I said unto you, You are come unto the mountain of the Amorites, which the Lord our God doth give unto us. Behold, the Lord thy God hath set the land before thee. Go up and possess it, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath said unto thee. Fear not, neither be discouraged. I love this. This reminds me of uh, Joshua 1.9, you know, uh, this last part here. Fear not, neither be discouraged. And it's very important to, to realize. Obviously, um, you know, this is, uh, they're talking to the children of Israel here, right? But this can be applied to us today. Of course it can, because the Bible says God will never leave us nor forsake us. So this right here, this last part here, can be applied to us. We shouldn't fear. The Bible says if God be for us, who can be against us? Absolutely no one. So that's why should we fear? Why should we be discouraged? We need to leave it in God's hands. In every single situation, circumstance, no matter the storm, no matter the battle, do not fear. Do not be discouraged. Keep relying and having faith on God Almighty because He is God Almighty. What can we do? that he he cannot do he can do all things he's god of the impossible so isn't that more than enough reason to not fear and to not be discouraged i'd say it is so literally read that and tell yourself i'm not going to fear i'm not going to be discouraged because god is on my side so tell yourself that sometimes we need to encourage ourselves and encourage others right so i'm telling you now do not fear do not be discouraged. Trust in God alone. Say, so, continuing on, uh, Deuteronomy 122. And you came near unto me, every one of you, and said, We will send men before us, and they shall search us out the land, and bring us word again by what way we must go up, and into what cities we shall come. And the saying pleased me well, and I took twelve men of you, one of a tribe, and they turned and went up into the mountain, and came into the valley of Eshcol, and searched it out. And they took of the fruit of the land in their hands, and brought it down to us, and brought us word again, and said, It is a good land which the Lord our God doth give us. Notwithstanding, ye would not go up, but rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God. And ye murmured in your tents, and said, Because the Lord hath hated us, he hath brought us forth out of the land of Egypt, to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites, to destroy us. Whither shall we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our hearts, saying, The people is greater and taller than we, and the cities are great and walled up to heaven. And moreover, we have seen the sons of the Anakims there. Then I said unto you, Dread not, neither be afraid of them. Oh, here's a really great verse, Deuteronomy 130. The Lord your God, which goeth before you, he shall fight for you, according to all that he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. This is a very important, uh, very important verse, too. The Lord our God goes before us, and he shall fight for us. Yes, even today he will. Um, he's literally, God is literally everywhere all at once. So he will go before you. He is with you. Every step you take, he is with you. Uh, if you're trusting the blood of Christ and what Christ did for you on the cross, you literally have God inside you, the Holy Spirit. Remember, Holy Spirit is uh, part of the Godhead, a.k.a. God inside you 
and you're sealed with that Holy Spirit, a promise, the Bible says. So every step you take uh, is with God. So just more verses that should encourage you. So the Lord your God which goeth before you, he shall fight for you. And in the wilderness where thou hast seen how that the Lord thy God bare thee, as a man doth bear his son in all the way that he went, until ye came unto this place, yet in this thing ye did not believe the Lord your God, who went in the way before you to search you out a place to pitch your tents in, in fire by night to show you by what way ye should go, and in cloud by day. And the Lord heard the voice of your words, and was wroth, and sware, saying, Surely there shall not one of these men of this evil generation see that good land, which I swear to give unto your fathers. Save Caleb the son of Jephunneh, he shall see it, and to him will I give the land that he hath trodden upon, and to his children, because he hath wholly followed the Lord. Very important lesson here. We need to wholly follow the Lord with all our heart, fervently, passionately, on fire for God. The Bible even talks about God does not want us cold. He doesn't want us lukewarm. Um, even says that if you're lukewarm, he'll spew you out. He'd rather you, you be cold or hot. Obviously, he wants you hot but uh, and on fire for him. But if, if you're lukewarm, it's worse than being cold, it says. So, do not be a lukewarm Christian. Be on fire for the Lord. Also, the Lord was angry with me for your sake, saying, Thou shalt not go in thither. But Joshua the son of Nun, which standeth before thee, he shall go in thither. Encourage him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. Moreover, your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, and your children, which in that day had no knowledge between good and evil, they shall go in thither, and unto them will I give it, and they shall possess it. But as for you, turn you and take your journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. Then ye answered and said unto me, We have sinned against the Lord, and we will go up and fight, according to all that the Lord our God commanded us. And when ye had girded on every man his weapons of war, ye were ready to go up into the hill. And the Lord said unto me, Say unto them, Go not up, neither fight, for I am not among you lest ye be smitten before your enemies. So I spake unto you, and ye would not hear, but rebelled against the command of the Lord, and went presumptuously up into the hill. And the Amorites which dwelt in that mountain came out against you, and chased you as bees do, and destroyed you in Seir, even unto Hormah. And ye returned and wept before the Lord, but the Lord would not hearken to your voice, nor give ear unto you. So ye abode in Kadesh many days, according to the days that ye abode there. Deuteronomy chapter 2. Then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea, as the Lord spake unto me, and we compassed Mount Seir many days. And the Lord spake unto me, saying, Ye have compassed this mountain long enough, turn you northward, and command thou the people, saying, Ye are to pass through the coast with your brethren, the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir, and they shall be afraid of you. Take ye good heed unto yourselves, therefore. Meddle not with them, for I will not give you their land, no, not so much as a foot breadth, because I have given Mount Seir unto Esau for possession. You shall buy meat of them for money that you may eat. You shall buy also water of them for money that you may drink. For the Lord thy God hath blessed thee in all thy works, the works of thy hands. He knoweth thy walking through this great wilderness these forty years. The Lord thy God hath been with thee. Thou hast lacked nothing. And when we passed by from our brethren, the children of Sal, which dwelt in Seir, through the way of the plain from Elath and from Ezon Geber, we turned and passed by the way of the wilderness of Moab. And the Lord said unto me, Distress not the Moabites, neither contend with them in battle, for I will not give thee of their land for a possession, because I have given our unto the children of Lot for possession. The Emims dwelt therein in times past, a people great and many and tall as the Anakims, which were accounted giants as the Anakims, but the Moabites called them Emims. And Horims also dwelt in Seir before time, but the children of Esau succeeded them, when they had destroyed them from before them, to dwell in their stead. And Israel did unto the land of his possession, which the Lord gave unto them. Now rise up, said I, and get you over the brook Zered. And we went over the brook Zered, and the space in which we came from Kadesh Barnea, until we were come over the brook Sedred, was thirty and eight years, until all the generation of the men of war were wasted out from among the host, as the Lord sware unto them. For indeed the hand of the Lord was against them, to destroy them from among the host, until they were consumed. So it came to pass that when all the men of war were consumed and dead from among the people, that the Lord spake unto me, saying, Thou art to pass over through Ar, the coast of Moab, this day. And when thou comest nigh over against the children of Ammon, distress them not, nor meddle with them, for I will not give thee of the land of the children of Ammon any possession, because I have given it unto the children of Lot for possession. That also was accounted a land of giants. Giants dwelt therein 
in old time. And the Ammonites called them Zamzumims. So uh, I'm not going to go into this too much, but the Bible literally talks about giants. People like to deny the fact that there are, were giants in the world. But literally, there's so many places and references to giants. Um, hello, David and Goliath. Goliath and his brothers were all giants. So there were, there was a, a you know, a na nations, many nations who were considered giants. Um, so very, uh, very important to realize that the Bible does talk about giants. So it's in the Bible. A people great and many and tall as the Anakims, but the Lord destroyed them before them and they succeeded them and dwelt in their stead. And he did to the children of Sal, which dwelt in Seir, when he destroyed the Horems from before them, and they succeeded them and dwelt in their stead, even unto this day. And the Avims, which dwelt in Hazarim, even unto Azah. And the Kaphtorims, which came forth out of Kaphtor, destroyed them and dwelt in their stead. So, you know, it's interesting we see here in these verses that all these races or all these nations of giants are being destroyed. Which, you're, if you think about it, you're like, how are these giants, if they're giant and great and many and tall, how are they uh, being destroyed? But we clearly see God's hand at work here. He's just, he's helping them be destroyed. So it's very interesting. Rise ye up, take your journey, and pass over the river Arnon. Behold, I have given into thine hand Sihon, the Amorite, king of Heshbon, and his land. Begin to possess it and contend with him in battle. This day I will begin to put the dread of thee and the fear of thee upon the nations that are under the whole heaven, who shall hear report of thee and shall tremble and be in anguish because of thee. Yep, we see this happen at Jericho. They're just so terrified, like unbelievably terrified of the children of Israel. And I sent messengers out of the wilderness of Kedemoth unto Sihon, king of Hashbon, with words of peace, saying, Let me pass through thy land, and I will go along by the highway. I will neither turn to the right hand nor to the left. Thou shalt sell me meat for money that I may eat, and give me water for money that I may drink. Only I will pass through on my feet, as the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir, and the Moabites, which dwell in Ar, did unto me until I should pass over Jordan to the land which the Lord our God giveth us. But Sihon, king of Heshbon, would not let us pass by him, for the Lord thy God hardened his spirit and made his heart obstinate, that he might deliver him into thy hand, as appeareth unto this day. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have given, uh, begun to give Sihon in his land before thee. Begin to possess that, that thou mayest inherit his land. Then Sihon came out against us, he and all his people, to fight at Jahaz, and the Lord our God delivered him before us. And we smote him and his sons and all his people. And we took all his cities at that time, and utterly destroyed the men and the women and the little ones every city. We left none to remain. Only the cattle we took for a prayer unto ourselves, and the spoil of the cities which we took. From Arar, which is by the brink of the river of Arnon, and from the city that is by the river, even unto Galid, where there's, there was not one city too strong for us, the Lord our God delivered all unto us. Only into the land of the children of Ammon thou camest not, nor into any place of the river Jabbok, nor into the cities and the mountains, nor unto whatsoever the Lord our God forbade us. Deuteronomy 3 Then we turned and went up the way to Bashan, and Og the king of Bashan came out against us, he and all his people, to battle at Edre. And the Lord said unto me, Fear him not, for I will deliver him and all his people and his land into thy hand, and thou shalt do unto him as thou didst unto Sihon king of the Amorites, which dwelt at Heshbon. So the Lord our God delivered him into our hands. Og also, the king of Bashan, and all his people, and we smote him until none was left to him remaining. And we took all his cities at that time. There was not a city which we took not from them, threescore cities, and all the region of Argob, the kingdom of Og and Bashan. So uh, remember we talked about this. I'll just keep repeating it just so uh, we can get this through our heads. It's, you know, that's how you learn. Repeat. Uh, a score is 20. So 3, 24, 60. 60 cities. All these cities were fenced with high walls, gates, and bars beside unwalled towns a great many. And we utterly destroyed them as we did unto the Sihon king of Heshbon, utterly destroying the men, women, and children of every city, but all the cattle and the spoil of the cities, we took for a prey to ourselves, and we took at that time out of the hand of the two kings of the Amorites the land that was on this side Jordan, from the river of Arnon unto Mount Hermon, which Hermon the Sidonians called Sirion, and the Amorites called it Shanir. All the cities of the plain, all the Gleed, and all Bashan, unto Salka and Edri, cities of the kingdom of Og and Bashan. For only Og, king of Bashan, remained the remnant of giants. Behold, his bedstead was a bedstead of iron. It is not in Rabbah of the children of Ammon. Nine cubits was the length thereof, and four cubits the breadth of it, after the cubit of a man. So if you want to know, get an idea, 
of how big this guy was, look up, uh, I forgot the dimensions, but look up what a cubit is, and then just add. So nine cubits was the length of the bed, and four cubits was the breadth of the bed. So that will give you an idea of how tall he was. Pretty big. He was a giant. And this land which we possessed at that time from error, which is by the river Arnon and half Mount Gilead, the cities thereof gave I unto the Reubenites and to the Gadites. And the rest of Gilead and all Bashan, being the kingdom of Og, gave I unto the half tribe of Manasseh, all the region of Argob with all Bashan, which was called the land of giants. Jair the son of Manasseh took all the country of Argob unto the coast of Jeshuri and Machthi, and called them after his own name, Bashan Havoth Jair, unto this day. And I gave Gilead unto Machir, and unto the Reubenites and unto the Gadites I gave from Gilead even unto the river Arnon, half the valley, and the border even unto the river Jabbok, which is the border of the children of Ammon. The plain also in Jordan and the coast thereof, from Chinnereth even to the sea of the plain, even the salt sea under Ashdoth Pisgah eastward. And I commanded you at that time, saying, The Lord your God hath given you this land to possess it. Ye shall pass over armed before your brethren, the children of Israel, all that are meet for the war, but your wives and your little ones and your cattle, for I know that you have much cattle, shall abide in your cities which I have given you, until the Lord hath given rest unto your brethren, as well as unto you, and until they also possess the land which the Lord your God hath given them beyond Jordan. And then shall ye return every man to, unto his possession, which I have given you. And I commanded Joshua at that time, saying, Thine eyes have seen all that the Lord your God hath done unto these two kings, so shall the Lord do unto all the kingdoms whither thou passest. Ye shall not fear them, for the Lord your God, he shall fight for you. And I besought the Lord at that time, saying, O Lord God, thou hast begun to show thy servant thy greatness and thy mighty hand. For what God is there in heaven or in earth that can do according to thy works and according to thy might? I pray thee, let me go over and see the good land that is beyond Jordan, let the, that goodly mountain in Lebanon. But God was wroth with me for your sakes, and would not let would not hear me, and the Lord said unto me, Let it suffice thee, speak no more unto me of this matter. So yeah, remember um, Moses got severely punished because he got mad at the children of Israel and smote the rock, which he was supposed to whisper to it to let water come out of it. But he smote it with his staff two times, did not give God the glory or praise. He's like, here, I'll give you water. You want water? I'll give you water. And so he, he did not give God the glory or praise. Yeah, I mean, that was out of anger. So, um, you know, it's unfortunate, but even Moses, you know, messed up. So someone as great as Moses messes up, um, you know, it's just, it's human. We all, Romans 3, 23, we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. So, you know, even Moses messed up. So he, Moses was not allowed to go into the land promised by God. But God did have mercy on him and allowed him to see the land. And we'll get to that soon. Um, so yeah, he uh, God was like, don't talk about it anymore. Get thee up into the top of Pisgah, and lift up thine eyes westward and northward, and southward and eastward, and behold it with thine eyes, for thou shalt not go over this Jordan. Here we go. So God did give him a, you know, a little bit of a peek. You know, right here. So God had a little mercy, despite you know being uh, it being a punishment. But charge Joshua and encourage him and strengthen him, for he shall go over before this people, and he shall cause them to inherit the land which thou shalt see. So we abode in the valley over against Beth Peor. All right. Well, that's going to be it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Hope you guys have a great evening, morning, noon, wherever you're at. And remember to put God first in everything you do. Have faith in him, trust in him, wait upon him, and be in the word daily. And you'll never be sorry. And we'll see you tomorrow, God willingly, with more Bible reading. So. Can't wait for that. Uh, thanks again. Take care and God bless.